All right, Facebook Live. Uh, Revelation chapter 16. Now we're going to do a little bit of a conclusion because we ran out of time for Revelation chapter 15. And Revelation chapter 15 dealt with the, the last plagues uh, uh, on mankind. We know that. It goes right into chapter 16. And the chapter 16 will be the final seven vials of the wrath of God. So we talked about the plagues. Now we're going to talk about the vials. And you say, why, why is this important? And uh, so when you think about it, uh, in Revelation chapter 11, verse 18, I'm just going to review very quickly. He says this, and the nations were angry. How many realize that in our nation, our nation's angry, right? And he says, and thy wrath has come and the time of the dead that they should be judged and that thou shouldest give reward, listen to this, reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, to them that what? Fear thy name, small and great, shouldest destroy, and shouldest destroy them that destroy the earth. Revelation 14, 10, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of indignation, and he says, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and the midst of the Lamb. Last of all, from Revelation 15, verse 8, and the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power, and no man was able to enter into the temple, listen, till, T-I-L-L, -L, there's a moment, till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. And as soon as the angels, in verse 6, come out of the temple, uh, great smoke from the glory of the presence of God and His power and His wrath is going to fill the temple so that neither angels nor human beings can go back in and, and worship until, he says, the seven plagues of the seven angels are completed. So we know that that uh, based on the Old Testament in Exodus chapter 19, verses 16 through 80, Exodus chapter 40, verse 34 through 35, also 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 10 through 11, and Isaiah 6, 4. Now I know we're recording this. You can go back and rewind it and get all that information. But we know that the tabernacle in the wilderness, no one could go inside. God is a consuming fire. And in Hebrews 12, 29, for our God is a consuming fire. You, there had to be the right uh, things that were in place in order for somebody to go into the Holy of Holies. That's why they would attach a rope to a priest. So if he was undefiled in any way, he, he would die on the spot. They had to pull him and drag him out. But in other words, the temple inside was off limits. Right? And he said it was talking about it was filled with smoke. We know that the tabernacle in the wilderness, no one could go inside until uh, the requirements were met. Why? God is a consuming fire. So during this time, no created human being will have access to the presence of God on his throne until the end of the tribulation period. And for he's not dealing with people in mercy, uh, as, which is usually his custom. But during the latter three and a half years of the Great Tribulation, he will deal with human beings in judgment because they refuse to repent, they refuse to, to love God, they refuse to accept His Son, Jesus Christ. Uh, and yet we read that a fire led them by night and by day in the Shekinah glory cloud in Exodus chapter 13, verse 21. This is the very same cloud, the very same presence that we read here that no man can enter into that holy place. So thank God for the blood of the Lamb. See, God sees Jesus' blood instead of us. Uh, when we enter, uh, we enter in as a believer, a believer in Jesus Christ. And that shed blood uh, was, keeps us from being burned up in God's presence. You see, He's a holy, powerful, righteous judge and a God. He is a God of love, but He's also a God that's holy. And, and anything that's unholy, anything that remains sinful, that refuses to let the blood of Jesus Christ wash away their sins, then He's left with nothing but vile humanity. And God says, I'm going to deal with that. You know, when I was growing up, Brother James, so often, you know, I, my mom would tell me, you, Rick, you better get that right because dad's coming home. Boy, when dad got home, it wasn't, hey, you want to go get an ice cream? 
No, it was like, you want to breathe? Right? So the judgment of dad came came down if, if we were disrespectful to our mother or to each other in any way. And it's the same way here. It, we, we can kind of understand that. Here's a God that says, you're not going to tear up the family. You're not going to hurt the family. You're going to deal with me now. All right? So God sees Jesus shed blood instead of us when we enter after we are a believer. And that shed blood that uh, it was kept has kept us from being burned up because God is a consuming fire, right? He's holy, he's righteous, he's just. You cannot just walk into God's presence. Why the Bible says that Luby takes his finger and place the planets where he wants, the planets, and he's, he spews out these planets out of his mouth, the Bible says. The sun came out of the mouth of God. Now here we are in Texas, we're going to have a 108 degree temperature. Somebody said, what's it like? Hey, they're talking about it can get as high as 126 even in Arizona. Now I don't know if you, you think that's bad, you ought to go to the Middle East. It gets really bad over there. But it is a consuming fire. And the Bible talks about how the sun will scorch men. I think it's just God's trying to say, hey, I want to get your attention because I love you, I care about you, and I want you to spend eternity with me. But to do that, the sin of Adam and Eve that came upon all men have separated mankind from the presence of God. And in order to get into the presence of God, John chapter 14, 1 through 6, the Bible's clear. I am the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Revelation chapter 1, it talks about the blood that's shed that saves us, right? So let's go right in, into Revelation uh, chapter 16. Revelation chapter 16. Now, in Revelation chapter 16, let's begin to read, if you will, in verse number 1. These are the vials of the wrath of God that comes upon the earth. So, Revelation 16 describes what? The final, the final seven vials of wrath of God, uh, representing the climax of God's judgment of sinners during the tribulation period who refuse to repent, they refuse to put their faith in God, they choose the Antichrist, they choose Lucifer. And so uh, here in Revelation chapter 16, unlike the other chapters, no repentance is invited. No repentance is shown. Isn't that odd? Why? It's a time of judgment. So the judgments are somewhat parallel to the ten plagues in Egypt and of the trumpets that we read in Revelation chapter 8 and Revelation chapter 9. But these vials, also called bowls, they're shallow bowls, right? And, and, the, the, and, and are more total and more universal in their effects than were the trumpet judgments. And generally, these affect people more directly. Revelation 6, 1, listen to what he says. He says, and I heard a great voice out of where? The temple saying to the seven angels, how many angels? Seven, right? Go your ways and pour out the vials of what? Of the wrath of God, where? Upon the earth. So the seven angels, each holding a vial or a shallow bowl that's containing the judgments of God that are going to fall on the earth, it seems reluctant to, to cast in that, that bitter judgment. And so God, the angels are going, you know, I, we're, we're kind of reluctant here, but God spoke. They're going to immediately go and deliver it. You know, there's times too that I'm sure that if you've been a parent, uh, you've had to discipline your children. And yet you felt reluctant. But if that child gets to the point to where uh, they're harming themselves and harming somebody else, you've got to take extreme measures, don't you? Same way here. If, if God doesn't do something and take some extreme measures, hey, mankind will wipe himself off of the earth. Now, let me show this to you. You see, Revelation 16, 1, I heard a great voice out of the temple saying, that means God is speaking, right? And he speaks to the seven angels and says, go your ways and pour out the vials of wrath of God upon the earth. And the seven angels, each holding a bowl containing all the judgments of the final judgments of God, they seem a little bit reluctant. We talked about that. 
because these are bitter judgments, right? And so uh, uh, we find that, however, uh, that they're yet obedient to God. When he speaks, the bowls constitute what the Lord Jesus referred to as the great distress. So Victoria, Matthew chapter 24, verse 21. Not just distress, but Lady Carol, great distress. In the last 42 months, known as the Great Tribulation Period. So four of these seven judgments occur literally in Egypt, uh, in our history, in Egypt among the ten plagues that have never been accepted uh, 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 by credible Bible teachers as anything but literal. These were literal plagues. If it said it was a frog, it was a frog. If it was blood, it was blood. If it was locust, it was... It's always been accepted as literal. So in addition, part of the sixth judgment, that of, of drying up the Euphrates River and producing frogs, and we're going to read about this, was also literally fulfilled during the history of Israel, during Pharaoh's time. If you've ever read that biblical story or that biblical account, frogs were generated as one of the plagues of Egypt. Can you imagine? You can't get, I mean, you get up out of your bed and, and Brother James, there, there's, there's a thousand frogs on the floor. Why? Maddie, you, you go to the bathroom and, and, and the toilet's full of frogs. You go out and get in your car, you can't get in your car because there's thousands and thousands of frogs everywhere, slipping and sliding and croaking and, and just miserable. And the stench is unreal. It, it, it touched everyone. So frogs were generated as one of the plagues of Egypt, and both the Red Sea and the, and the Jordan River were rolled back so that God's people could walk across on dry ground. Now why is that important? We'll share this with you. Therefore, nothing new is going to be transpiring when God dries up the Euphrates River in order, now listen, in order that the kings of the east may march over on dry ground. So if the plagues of Egypt were literal, and I believe they were, uh, and, and everything, why should we not expect that these awful judgments likewise to be literal. Look in the next verse, Revelation chapter 16, verse 2. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth. Now watch. And there fell a noisome and grievous sore. I want you to circle that. A sore upon the men which had what? The mark of the beast. Now let me tell you right now. You say, well, well if, if, if I have to take a mark so I can buy food and grocery, hey, don't do it. Not only does it condemn you forever because you're going to have to literally seal your heart against God, but God's going to send out a judgment that, that when the sun is scorching heat, soars, and I'll talk to you more about these blisters, right? They're, they're going to be agonizing. But you know what's going to happen? Is a lot of times uh, our, when we have a sore, we like to wash it in clean water. We like to disinfect it, don't we? But imagine a day when there is no clean water. Imagine when there is no water, consumable water, right? So he says, so who does this, who do these sores happen to? Those who what? Took the mark of the beast. Let's read again. Verse 2, Revelation chapter 16. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had what? The mark of the beast, and upon them which what? Worship. His image. Remember, this is the five, this is the first vile judgment. All right, and it's foul, and, and it's loathsome sores that you can imagine on your body. And when men choose to worship the Antichrist rather than Christ and demonstrate their allegiance by accepting the mark of the beast, God responds by sending uh, on them a plague. Was it say, Maddie, a noisome and grievous? So it is so painful that loopy people are screaming and crying because of the pain of these blisters, these sores upon their body. And John makes it clear that these awful sores afflict only those who worship the Antichrist and who have accepted the mark of the beast. So no tribulation saints will suffer with them. Why? They're already marked by God the Father. 
all right? But the first vial produces a painful sore on the followers of the beast, uh, wherever they are. And the parallel of the boils of the sixth plague in Egypt. Now, here's, here's, here's the scriptures. If you want to read about the plagues, Exodus chapter 9, verse 9 through 11. How about Deuteronomy 28, 27? Did you know even in the book of Job, chapter 2, verse 7 through 13, it talks about people with boils, right? So uh, the Septuagint uh, uses uh, and, uh, the same Greek word to describe the boils in the plagues of Egypt in Exodus chapter 9, verse 9 through 11, is, and showing how people were afflicted in Job chapter 2, verse 7, the same Greek word is also used here. So in the New Testament, it describes the open source that covered the beggar of Lazarus in Luke chapter 16, verse 21. And all over the world, people will be afflicted with this incurable, open, oozing sore and the mark of the beast. Only the worshipers of the Antichrist will be affected. Let me help you out. I'm going to go back to a few verses back in Revelation chapter 13. Uh, 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 verses 16 through 17, the King James, and he causes all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Verse 17, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, the name of the beast, or the number of his name. The only way to accomplish that is pretty much to go to a cashless system. How many, how many have been to any of the uh, stores recently? If you don't have the exact change, what happens? You don't get any change. And they're wanting you to use a debit card or a credit card. I'm telling you, everything is being set up right now. Now, I don't, I've talked to some of you ahead of time. Uh, you say, well, I'll never take the mark. I'll never take a chip. Hey, listen, I'm looking at a cell phone right now that, that uh, if I go to my settings on an Android uh, or if you go to your settings on an iPhone, it's, it's out there, guys. The COVID-19 tracker, when your phones went down the other day and nobody could text, nobody could talk to each other, and it was all over the nation, they reset a tracker on your phone. And I've got videos out there I've uploaded today. But all you've got to do is go to the settings. Now, I want you to think about that. You go to the settings. And on Android, you go to Google settings. And at the top, boom, there it is. There's the COVID-19 tracker. Now, on an iPhone, it's a little different, but it's there. And uh, I don't know all the story, but when I heard the video about it, the guy used a lot of some vulgarity, so I just, I'm going to summarize this up. So I made a video. I, I'm trying to warn people. You need to be aware of what's going on. We are being tracked, and that's just the way it is today. But it's not the same as accepting the mark of the Antichrist. And I would tell people, do not take the mark. Don't take the mark. Why? Because in Revelation chapter 16, God's going to come down with a fierce anger for those who did take the mark. And one of them is going to be the sores, the, the grievous crying out of sores that are on your body. In fact, in Luke chapter 16, it said the only relief that Lazarus got is when the dogs came and what? Licked his sores. Can you imagine that, not having anything at your disposal, even the essentials of life? And I'm going to just throw this out there. Why in the world would we go through America destroying our stores and destroying our pharmacies and all that? You know what you're left with? Desolation. And you know what people are going to do? They're going to get hungry. They're going to get hurt. And they're going to get violent. And I'm telling you, you would think people would repent and get it right today. You're going to find out in the book of Revelation, even with all this going on, Brother James, they're going to still refuse to repent. They're going to refuse to, in a sense, to be a human being and respecting human rights. So let me go this a little bit farther. All right, Revelation chapter 14, verse 9 and 11. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink, here it is, of the wine of the wrath of God, which is Revelation 16, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke, look at what he says in verse 11 of Revelation 14, and the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image. Now listen, and whosoever receive the mark, here it is, in his name. So further confirmation that these three judgments, the seals, 
and the trumpets and the vials are all sequential, not, uh, not, not concurrent as some Bible teachers might suggest, but we're going to find here, it, it is clarified that in this time, these judgments will come upon. It may not be in the chronological order that we're talking about, but they are coming. The Antichrist will not, uh, not be set up, at, uh, at, or the Antichrist will not be set up as the object of worship until the middle of the tribulation period, and the judgment falls on humans because of their worship worship of the Antichrist, which can only occur after, I say it again, after the middle of the tribulation. These are the final judgments that are coming down. So the recipients are the beast worshipers. Only those containing the mark of the beast and worshiping his image will be selected for these awesome, oh my gosh, I almost want to call it demonic sores, right? So some say, what a cruel thing for God to do. No, I, oh, I beg you different. Why? This is just not so. Why? God is more than gracious to all of mankind. We all deserve every one of the plagues that we read about in Exodus. But God loves us for this reason. And that's why he's, he provided a way out through Jesus Christ. Each of these plagues happen not only in punishment, but get this, Victoria, one of the reasons I believe is to get men to repent. Sometimes things have got to get bad, bad, really bad. I mean, really, really, I mean, really, really bad before you get somebody's attention. You know, I don't know what it's going to take to get our attention as a church, as human beings. Listen, the devil's going to come after your marriage. He's going to come after your finances. He's going to come after your health. He's going to come after your social. He's going to try to dry up everything. Hey, listen, you know, God's going to allow the Euphrates River to dry up so that the kings of the east can come over and there's going to be a war. I'm telling you that God is going to allow some things to dry up here. And I want to just share a few of those because I know we're on a short leash here on the, on the time zone. But, but I want you to understand that, that this indicates that God is a, has marvelous grace and he's not bringing judgment on believers during the last half of the tribulation. And he does that in order to protect them. And, that he, and he does this uh, uh, just like he did with the Israelites in Egypt. He did that to get their attention. He tried to get Pharaoh's attention. He tried to get the world's attention. And those that put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ, you remember they took the blood, put it on the lantern, the mantles, and when the death angel came over, the judgment of God passed over them. That's why they call it the Passover, by the way. But you see, they were under the blood. But those who weren't, the firstborn of everyone, died. And even Pharaoh hardened his heart. You'd think that when you saw all of that heartache coming your way and all the plagues coming the people say you know what man I better get right I better get saved I better I better line up with God but instead they got bitter they got angry how many are seeing that in our streets today in America people aren't wanting to repent they're not wanting to get saved they're they're, they're destructive and guess what that spirit has to be here it's the beginning because it's that spirit that's going to try to take over. I, I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just telling you, you, you don't believe me. Just go look at Facebook. Go look at the videos that are coming out. There are things, people don't even have a conscience anymore. They don't treat people like human beings. So this further consumes our assumption that in the previous judgment, God is going to allow to be slain 25%. And then another third of the world's population that's remaining, making a total of 50% that, but yet he will exempt believers. Half of our world will be gone, people-wise. It's going to be a hard time, guys. It's going to be vile. In fact, look in verse 3. Let's move up to next verse 3. Revelation 16, 3. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea. That's always the sea of humanity, right? And it became, here it is, as the blood of a dead man. Now I want you to circle that because we're going to talk about the blood of a dead man. And it says, and every living soul died in the sea. Then the second vile judgment became as what? The blood of a dead man. Now the second angel poured out the vial upon the sea. And it turns into blood like that of a dead man. And every living thing in the sea, it dies. 
Now this is important, all right? This is reminiscent of the second trumpet of Revelation chapter 8, verse 8 through 9, and the first plague in Egypt uh, in Exodus chapter 7, verse 20 through 25. However, this plague is not going to be isolated like it was in Exodus. This is going to be worldwide. And so the water in the oceans, imagine this, will become thick and dark and coagulated. When a, when a man dies... His blood begins to solidify. It becomes coagulated. It becomes dark because the oxygen is not in it anymore. And, and it becomes very, very thick. And it, it's like the blood of a corpse, right? So the death and the decay of billions and billions of sea creatures will only add to the misery and the judgment. You remember the frogs we talked about? Oh, the stench was horrible. You couldn't even get, the water was ruined. It was all contaminated. We have already seen that God will cause a third part of the sea to turn to blood during the second trumpet. But this second bowl includes the entire sea. All right? Imagine when all living creatures of the sea die. Think of the unbearable stench and the potential for disease. You know, it's, we, we've seen the, the blood of a dead man on our beaches before. What does it mean? Have you ever seen where the whales had beached themselves? And, and oh, the cleanup was massive. It was horrible. And the stench was there. But the disease of the rotting flesh, how it affected that area. So the judgment may well in, interfere with the commercial shipping and to send whole populations into confusion as people grow. Are you ready for this? Just to get an adequate supply of water not to mention destroying what is left of the fishing industry. Not, not counting, listen, we get a lot of our, our products from overseas that are shipped by ships. And already we've seen uh, because of, and by the way, for, <laughs> I'm going to make you mad, all right? Not trying to, but go back and find out what is the requirement for a pandemic. There's got to be at least what? What does it say? 6% deaths? Of a population, six percent, and we're at zero point what one two four something like that. I mean, you, you get what? There's more than just the fear of a pandemic, all right. But during this day, the pandemic's going to be there. Fifty percent loss of all human around the globe. These vials, these trumpets, and these evil things happening are like the problems that came with the ten plagues in Egypt. In all cases, God brought them on to cause repentance. Did you get that? Now, there'll be some who won't repent. Luby, they're just flat. I don't care what you do. They're not going to repent. There'll be people today, listen, we can talk to all the people that are rioting and, and, and bringing harm. You can talk till your mouth falls off and, until your heart falls out, until you're frustrated. But as long as they've got to end their heart to be angry, to mean, to be ruthful, and to be destructive, it's going to take the presence of God to change that. If we fight... The sword with the sword. Those who fight with the sword will die by the sword. And we're in a time now that, listen, Christians, if you've never had a real prayer, an intercessory prayer life, now's the time to learn how to do that. Now's the time to learn not only to plead the blood of Jesus Christ for the mercy and the grace of God, but then like Acts 1.8, Lady Carol, we talked about, is that God would give us power through that resurrected power of Jesus to do what he did for Peter, to stand up and to preach and tell the truth and to warn so that people would come to repentance and get saved. Well, if there's ever a time that churches, and, and, and it may be that God moved all the Christians out of the, out of the churches so we'd get out in the streets and start telling the gospel of Jesus Christ. But the devil's going to try to shut our voice. And in all cases, God brought them out to cause repentance. Just as Pharaoh repented not, these worshipers in that day who worshiped the beast, they will not repent. I don't care what you do, what you offer them. I don't care how much money you give. They're not going to repent, right? So many large cities have, have so much population today that the water, the land, the air, and the food is now bad. Verses 4 through 7, the third vial turns all flesh water to blood so that no pure water for drinking is left on the earth. Did you get that? You think it's bad now? Hey, people are, are they're trying to think they're fighting for human rights. They're not. But I'll tell you this, there's going to come a day when people are going to fight for the essence of life. What is that? Air. What else is it? 
Water. What else is it? Food. Do you not understand when we see generations upon generations destroying the food supply, the water supply? Do you understand that hard times are coming more than we could imagine? So the plague here will be widespread. The water in the world's oceans will become thick and dark and coagulated just like the blood of a corpse. Okay, and so are the blood of a dead man coagulating and rotting and, and, and no evaporation for rain is even possible. The judgment may well interfere with maybe, like I said, the, the commercial shipping of our products, things that we depend on. They're right. Hey, guys, we not only need farmers farming today and back to farming, but you know what we need? We need truckers that can truck without being attacked and shot at and abused. We need American homes that can take and, and say, hey, yes, we can stand up and proudly hold our shoulders back and say, not only am I a child of God and I'll say, I'm thankful I'm a Texan, but also I am a citizen of the United States of America. If we could learn to stand up, hold our shoulders back. But first of all, the first thing you need to do is stand up and be proud that you are a child of the living God through the blood of Jesus Christ. So these vials, these trumpets, these evil things happening are like the problems that came when the ten plagues of Egypt came. And like I said, many large cities uh, uh, have so much of a population that we're seeing people move in droves into surrounding areas. We've already seen that God will cause a third part of the sea to turn to blood during the second trumpet. But this second bowl includes the entire sea. Imagine what it will be like when you, when you get around the sea. It's like the blood of a dead man. Everything is rotting. It's decomposing, right? And it's just a judgment. So these vials, these trumpets, these evil things happening are like the problems they had with the ten plagues. Hopefully it will get your attention. I know it got Israel's attention. But they got to see that when they were under the blood of the Lamb, that the plagues passed over them. I'm telling you, if you want protection today, it's not by, because you belong to a church. It's not because you have a denominational name. Hey, somebody said, what are you? I'm a child of God, bought by the blood of the Lamb, sealed by the Holy Ghost in my heart. My name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Not because I chose to wind up going into denomination. Yes, I've been in a, in a Baptist denomination, but I wasn't raised Baptist. But I'm telling you, there's not a single Baptist going to be in heaven there's not a single church of Christ listen your denomination won't get you there but the blood of Jesus will for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved Romans 10 13 did y'all get that John 3 16 that every denomination talks about for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever what believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life Jesus is the only hope we've got now and in the future. So again, we know that as we look at this, as we're closing this down, we'll have to probably finish this up tonight, but, but here we find those who shed the blood of God's people must now drink the blood themselves. All right? When you shed the blood, if, if you live by the sword, you'll die by the sword. And in this last day, we know this, that again, the parallels with the Egyptians' plague, but also the third trumpet in chapter 8, verse 10 through 11, that is the righteous for God to judge the earth. Thus, why? It shows it by a fact that the beast and his followers, are you ready? Had shed the blood of the saints and the blood of the prophets. Now they are forced because of the waters to, to be, that are bitter and bloody. He said, now you're going to have to drink of that. You ever heard the saying, you're going to reap what you sow? Still holds true today. Why, listen, Isaiah chapter 49, verse 26, he says, I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh, and they shall be drunken with their own blood as the sweet a wine or with sweet wine and all the flesh shall know that I the Lord am the Savior and the Redeemer and the mighty one of Jacob Revelation 16 4 let's move to the next verse time's running out oh it's, boy that, that's a, a statement isn't it Maddie time's running out listen Revelation 16 4 and the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and the fountains of water and they became what they became blood. So the third vile judgment poured out 
uh, 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 his, uh, uh, the angel poured out his vial upon the rivers. And the third vial, a, second to the, uh, a sequel to the second, it carries with it an interesting explanation as to why God allows this to be permitted, right? So God will destroy the only remaining sources of water. I've always said, listen, you need oxygen, you need water, you need food. Listen, God will destroy the only remaining sources of water, the rivers and the fountains or springs of the deep, by letting them turn into blood. That's the third vial, rivers and fountains of waters, right? So fresh water already in short supply becomes this prolonged drought. We've read about that in Revelation eleven six. 6. Uh, will now suffer the fate of the oceans, like in Exodus chapter 7, verse 19. You know what it's going to create? It's going to create, Lady Carol, a thirst like you've never had before. Why? I believe God's trying to say, I want you to get thirsty for me. I want you to get thirsty for a real salvation. So in addition to the, su the suffering from thirst, the, worships of the uh, worshipers of the Antichrist will have no clean water at, in which to wash their sores with. Revelation, let's move to verse 6. Revelation 16, 6. For they have shed the blood of the saints and the prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. Now whether this means literal blood, it, real blood or not, that's insequential. Why? For Christ, if Christ can turn water into wine, he can certainly turn uh, water into into blood right and that's important why because what is significant is is that it will become a, a, a corrupt blood which will bring disease and pestilence like this world's never seen and one of the basic needs of humankind is what water now listen I'm gonna make a point here unless God provides water from another source uh, of engineers or by some process that can turn this corrupted uh, 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 you know water you know, contaminated water into pure water unless that happens the world's going to be in a state of riots like you've never seen in a state of confusion like you don't even understand and they're going to be seeking the necessities of life there will not be a door of a home that will be secure are y'all getting the picture here you don't want to be around during this time because revelation 16 says he's coming back with vengeance with judgment right let's move to the next verse and of this declares the devastation beyond what you and I can even begin to comprehend. The judgment of God has fallen. And sometimes God uses wars to bring about His will. About At any rate, this no doubt uh, does away with a good part of humanity. 50% of the human race on the earth, global, is gone. Revelation 16, 5. And I heard the angel of the water say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and wast and shall be. Look at there. That's the eternal God. That's his deity that he says what? Which art, which was, and shall be, because thou hast judged thus. Or you were righteous in you judging this, all right? Notice here, this is not the people saying that God is righteous. This is an angel saying that God is righteous. At no time do the people repent. That's the sad part. And the angel here says to the judgment that God has brought, he says, you're justified. God, the, this God mentioned here is the great I am, which art, which what? Did you get that? He says, and I heard the angel of the water say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art was and shall be, because thou judged accordingly. You judged rightly. You judged thus. The angel here is saying to the judgment that God has brought here that it's about time, right? It's time to get rid of all this. How am I getting sick and tired of the sick and tired? Everybody says, boy, I can't wait till this is over. You know what you just said? To get over with, we got to get through some stuff. Now listen, listen carefully. Verse 6 says that the eternal God will judge justly because they have killed the believers, killed the preachers of the gospel. Now you mark my words, there will come a day when you'll see preachers like myself and others that are trying to be true to the gospel. They're trying to get people to become soul winners and they're trying to get people ready to prepare for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Trying to get people saved. Listen, we're going to be some of the first that's going to be drawn away in prison taken out so I told you I said I sure love you guys I'm glad we're here today amen I have no guarantee what's going to happen tomorrow but boy when you get down to this part of Revelation chapter 16 man the preachers are gone 
The churches are done away with. I'm telling you, it's going to be hard, guys. I'm telling you. So once again, this phrase, which art and was, is the eternal God. And he's going to take and allow the slaughter to take place. Revelation 16, 6 says, For they have shed the blood of the saints, the prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. He says, given them blood to drink, this thick, blood-like substance which the flesh waters have become is all that's available to drink. Look at Revelation 16, 4. Let's go back. The third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers, the fountains, the waters, and they became blood. And then he says they are worthy. So the angel exonerates God from any charges of his judgment being too harsh. Well, God, you're being too hard. And the angel says, no, I, I, saw, I saw what mankind was doing. They turned their back on God. They turned their back on Jesus. They refused to repent. And, and so this unspeakable wicked generation, uh, then alive, will shed more blood than ever before. More anger, more hurt, more vengeance than you can ever imagine. You think the mobs are bad now. The mobs are like little kids compared to what this earth's going to go through when they're all, people are just fighting and killing in order just for the necessities of life. I'm not trying to be a dooms and you know, a doomed preacher, I'm trying to tell you, hey, it's coming. I'm trying to tell you, hey, listen, there's a Jesus, and God's already marked you with the Holy Spirit, and we got a God, we're on God's side, and God's going to spare us, and God's going to take care of us, and when it's all said and done, He's going to create a new heaven and a new earth, and we will reign with God, be with God, and boy, that's a new chapter coming up. I can't wait to get to that chapter. Woo, this stuff here's kind of depressing, isn't it? But it's also very exciting that you and I get to be the part of the church that's got to see this issued in. We'll stand and say, hey, I was there. Guys, I was there when all this stuff began. I was there. But will you let God use you in these last days to be a witness? We'll close with Revelation 16, 7. And I heard another out of the altar say, even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. We'll pick up there tonight. I hope you'll join us. And uh, we, our church services at night are at 6 o'clock when we meet, but 6.15. We give everybody a chance to come in and pray and get to know one another, and then we get right into the Word of God. It's broadcast on Facebook Live. It's, it, it's then downloaded and put on our YouTube channel. But go to our website, lyitl.org, and check, check it out. There's a lot of great information well, let's close it with this. And I always do. So what do we do, Brother James? The preaching is interesting. I know it is. The Word of God is, wow. I know it is. But the bottom line is, you will give an account. We're all born. We will all expire. We will all die. And we got this dash. And we'll give an account to this God, this Creator who created you and I. We're going to give an account to God for everything we thought, everything we did. Even though we've been saved by the blood of the Lamb, and we're sealed and we're going to heaven, you're still going to be held accountable for your actions, whether you get rewards or not. So I encourage you, be like the thief on the cross. And say, hey, man, I'm in a bad situation here. I'm not going to make it through the day. I don't know if, if brother we're going to make it through the day. But I know this, I look around and I don't like the 108 degree temperature. I don't like the shelves being empty. I don't like the, the way people are getting angry. Nobody wants to smile anymore. Nobody wants to laugh anymore. Nobody wants to get together anymore. And I don't like the empty church built. There's a lot I don't like. But there's a lot of things I do like. I woke up this morning knowing that there's a Savior living in my heart. Because there was a time I asked Jesus, like the thief on the cross, he turned and said, would you remember me? He said, I'm guilty, I deserve it, but will you remember me? And Jesus, if you could only get a picture in the head, this thing that looked like a beast that was beaten and marred and slain and, and crowns on his head, beard plucked out, and, and his eyes are swollen, and yet he's breathing, he's pounding, and he pulls against the nails, and he looks over at the thief and says, today, you see how much he loves us individually? Today thou will be with me in paradise. Listen, the Bible says now is the accepted time. Now is the accepted time of salvation. Why not put your faith and trust in Jesus? We're not going to make it out of here alive, guys. We're all going to die. For it's a point on the man wants to die, and after that, the judgment. But thank God, if we'll put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, and only in Jesus Christ, just like the thief on the cross, Jesus will turn to you individually and say, it's going to be okay. Because today, when you die, you're going to be with me in paradise. Father, I pray, if there be one here today that doesn't know you truly as Lord and Savior, then, Lord, they realize they're a sinner because of Adam and Eve. 
And the best they know how, they're going to look to a Jesus that hung on the cross, that died and arose on the third day, is now in heaven at the right hand of the Father, waiting and listening for someone to say, Dear Lord Jesus, would you remember me? Would you save me? And you'll say the same thing to them as you did to the thief on the cross and to me. Hey, listen, I got this taken care of. You don't have to worry about it. No matter what, the day that you expire, the day that you die, I'm going to take you to my paradise. I'm going to take you to a place where there's no more pain, no more suffering, no more dying, no more heartache. And so I pray, Lord, let somebody say, save me, Lord Jesus. Save me right now. And then trust you for that. And then ask the Holy Spirit to come into them to give them wisdom and power and authority to be a vessel that can be used of God to witness so others can come to know you as Lord and Savior. We love you. Hugs and kisses in Jesus' name. Amen. Hope to see you tonight. All right? God bless you all.